Mum's children's sleep unit and we're about to go in. So, just push the button. Hi, I'm Tilly and I'm here with Dr. Sarah Biff and we're going to ask her a few questions about sleep. So, how important is sleep? Sleep is very important. Did you know that if you live to 90 years old, you will have been asleep for 30 years of your life? <laughs> we spend about a third of our lives asleep and it's really important for things like growth, for memory, for learning, for your appetite and, and um, regulation of your weight, so, so keeping weight off. All of those things that we don't even think about are really, really important. Yeah. So how do we prevent nightmares? Is it a special technique or is it just luck? Well, nightmares are a funny thing. Um, there's two types of nightmares. So there's bad dreams that you have when you wake up and you know that you've had a bad dream. And then there's a, a thing called night terrors, which it happens when you're in your deepest, deepest sleep. And a lot of time with night terrors, you'll wake up and you'll be, uh, sorry, you'll, you'll sit up and you'll be really frightened, but you won't be awake. You'll still be asleep and you won't remember it in the morning. In terms of preventing nightmares where you remember, the thing that, that you can do is make sure that you don't watch scary movies before you go to bed, don't read scary books before you go to bed, um, try to not eat foods that have um, a lot of sugar in them before you go to bed because that stimulates your brain and that could give you nightmares. Yeah. So what stops us sleeping? There's a lot of things that will stop people from sleeping. One of the the biggest things that stop children from sleeping is doing um, like things like watching TV in a bedroom, playing on an iPad in your bedroom before you're tr trying to fall asleep, on your phone, those types of things can, can keep you awake because the light from your electronic devices actually wakes you up, wakes your body up. So those types of things can stop us sleeping high sugar foods before going to bed so and caffe caffeinated drinks so things like coke and, and things like that they can also stop you sleeping as well. On the topic of food what food should we eat to get a better sleep? Um, the I guess it's more about what foods you shouldn't eat so as I was saying before things with a lot of sugar just before you go to bed are not good things with caffeine are not good so your, your coke even chocolate um, has caffeine in it. So those types of things, eating those just before you go to sleep it is not so good. Having um, say a banana or um, a cup of milk or something like that before you go to sleep if you're hungry then, then they, they're actually quite good to help you sleep. How does sleeping help us learn? So when we sleep, so, so when we sleep our memories go from our short-term memory, so what we've learnt during the day and what we've, we've taken in during the day, go from short-term memory to long-term memory during sleep. So what happens is during sleep is when all of the stuff that you've learnt during the day gets um, consolidated. It's like being saved on a computer. So if you are typing a document and you just leave it on your desktop without saving it, that's where all your information is before you go to sleep. When you go to sleep, that's when you hit the save button. And so all of that information gets saved into your brain. And that's what helps you learn. Also, when you, when you get a good night's sleep, you're able to concentrate better the next day. And so you're able to take in that information because you're, you're more alert and you're able to pay attention. Are there different beds that help us sleep, like the mattresses? Do the mattresses help us sleep? Or? I, th I think in terms of the beds, it depends on what you're comfortable with. So everybody likes a different type of bed. Some people like really hard beds, some people like really soft beds. And it just depends on what you're comfortable with. The really important thing with sleep is not to be too hot or too cold. So it's more about the blankets that you have rather than the bed in terms of helping you sleep. If you're too hot, you won't sleep well. If you're too cold, you won't sleep well. And so you, you need that nice balance to be, to be warm when you sleep. Um, and it's more about that than the actual bed itself. Yeah. yeah. So what are the three main tips to help us get better sleep? The first thing is to make sure that you go to bed at the same time every night. So our sleep loves routine. You, you have the best night's sleep if you can have the same amount of sleep every night and also go to bed the same time every night. So that's really important. Have a, have a consistent routine that you don't change too much, even on weekends, that it's always the same. The other thing is avoid 
um, caffeine, high sugary foods before you go to bed so that you're not awake, so you don't wake your body up before you go to bed. And also make sure that you don't use your computers or iPads or telephones in your bedroom. And make sure you have about half an hour of no screen, so no TV, no computer, no iPad, no telephone, um, before you go to bed. About 30 minutes you should turn all that off. And that will help you get a good night's sleep. So tell us about some of the equipment you use. Sure. So when we do a sleep study, we put electrodes on um, people's heads and this measures brain waves. So it tells us what the brain is doing during sleep. So we have this little electrode and we have a, a cup, little cup here that we fill with paste and then that just gets stuck on, um, on the head and there's a number of those. We also measure heart rate. So these will, help, will measure somebody's heart rate and we measure muscle activity around the eye with these. So we stick these onto um, just outside of the eyes. And we also measure muscle activity in the legs during sleep. So these will me measure um, what the legs are doing during sleep and whether people move their legs a lot during sleep. So how do we use all this information? So it gets transferred from the person and through those electrodes, the brain signals come through and the muscle signals come through onto this computer. And so what we have here, this is an example of the brain waves. So this is during sleep and this is in a, a lighter stage of sleep. And if I just move that along, you can see how that changes. So this is getting into a deeper sleep with these big waves here. So the brain changes as sleep changes throughout the night. You can see there's lots of different types of brain waves. Now this is this here is a dreaming sleep so the person here is dreaming with these little short sharp waves here and then if we look here they're in a really quite deep sleep with the big waves and the, that are um, far apart so the brain is going quite slow here in a deep sleep. 